Hiya. Uh, so today, or in this video, we'll be talking about interpreting probability and how this kind of works out. Uh, so we so far have talked about the super basics of probability. We're going to get much more deep in that later um, this week um, in future videos. Uh, but for now, the question now becomes, um, how do we interpret probability? So if we're thinking about probability, um, how do we know whether, um, like how we're interpreting it? Um, and there's two main different ways of interpreting probability. One of it um, is called frequency probability. Uh, so let me highlight this. Um, one of it is called frequency and another is called subjective interpretations of probability. Uh, now there's other interpretations as like propensity, logical, predictive, etc. You can go to Wikipedia and get a much more thorough list um, and figure out what each one means. But for us, we're going to be focusing on just the frequency interpretations and the subjective interpretations. In particular, we're going to look at frequency most of the course. Um, so we'll start off with frequency interpretations. Basically what a frequency interpretation is when we're looking at probability and we're asking things like how frequent, how frequently or how often something will occur. Uh, and so when we look at probability from this perspective, we call it the frequency probability. Uh, and so usually these are things that um, we can write down that we have statistics on. So it's like usually when we say how often will X occur, right? Um, or will, uh, yeah, so these are the kind of things. Uh, and a lot of times when we're doing this in the real world, we're going to want to actually test our assumptions um, to make sure things are happening. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to define something called relative frequency. So what is relative frequency? It's basically when we're doing trials of, an, of a test. So we have some idea of something that's happening, like rolling a dice. So we do multiple trials. We roll the dice many times um, and we record how often um, an event happens or doesn't happen. And so the relative frequency is basically keeping track is a proportion which measures how frequently something occurs in a sequence of observations. Sometimes observations are called trials. Um, you'll see that term a lot probably because um, we I interplay between the two. Uh, so normally we record these observations over time and see where they trend to. So let's look at an example of kind of what I'm talking about and that I think should bring things down and make things make a little more sense. Because if not, it's like a little weird right now. Um, always, always my finger. Okay, there we go. Uh, so let's look at an example. And we'll look at an example that we, we're pretty sure we know kind of how things would work. Uh, so we're going to look at the chances of rolling a five on a six-sided dice. Um, now here we know that the probability is one-sixth. So we expect over time this should trend towards one-sixth, right? Um, and so what we're going to do is in order to figure out the relative frequency, we're going to take a die and we're going to roll it. And every time we roll a five, we keep track of that we rolled a five. And every time we didn't, we keep track that we didn't. So we're keeping always, we're always keeping track whether we roll a five or not. And this over time will tell us kind of what we get. So say, um, we're, I'm not going to do this in front of you. Uh, there's actually videos of people doing stuff like this. Um, but we're going to say, uh, that. I did this test and I got super lucky and that the third, the fourth and the seventh time we rolled the dice out of 10 rolls, um, we got a five. So let's replicate how we would get the relative frequency over time. So I roll the first time, I don't get a five. So what I would record is I got zero fives out of one, out of one trials. Okay, so now I take a die and I roll it again. Uh, again, it's not um, a five, so I have zero so far and this was the second trial. Now I said the third time I will get a five. So I now take my die. I roll it a third time. I get a five. So I have a five. So I'm going to increment my numerator by one. And then I, I increment my denominator by one. So the third trial I had a one. Again, like I said, we're super lucky. So the fourth trial, I get a five again. So here we get two in the fourth trial. 
Now the fifth and sixth, I get nothing, right? So again, this should be, oops. So I keep the two, right? Because I've had two so far. I never decrement this at all. Uh, so this fifth and sixth trial, nothing gets added to the numerator. The seventh trial, we get another one, three seventh. And then the eighth, the ninth, and the tenth, nothing changes. So we still get only three fives. So at the end, you'll see we get roughly three tenths. So 30%, 30% is not anywhere near the 16% we would normally get. Um, but it kind of helps see how we would do this. Um, and obviously humans are also very visual people. We like seeing things, right? Um, and so what we're going to want to do is we're going to actually take this and we're going to plot it into a graph. Uh, and so the way to do that is we're going to make certain points where remember how we had these numerators and denominators. The denominator is just going to keep track of um, how far in the x-axis we're going to go. So um, I wonder if I can, yeah, I can do both at once. So let's look at these points. So <laughs> in the first case, we have 0 over 1. In the second case, we had 0 over 2. In the third case, we had 1 third. In the fourth case, we have 2 fourths. In the fifth case, we have 2 fifths, um, etc. So basically what I'm doing is I'm taking each one of my trials, each one of my relative frequencies, and I plug it in to that um, component. So 0 over 2, this is my second trial. This comes into the second uh, relative frequency. My third trial is the third one, um, etc. So you can kind of see where these points are coming from. And then we can plot this. I'm not going to plot this here because, like I said, it's a fake trial. Uh, but what I did is I actually took um, a computer and I said, okay, computer, roll this die 500 times. Um, and let me know how often the number five appears. Um, and I ended up with this graph, um, which is a little weird. So notice how right at the beginning, I'll zoom in, right at the beginning I had this chunk, so I guess this is in 20s, so this is 20 here. Um, I had this chunk here where I got no fives. Uh, it looks like almost eight or nine times I got no fives, so I was really unlucky in the beginning. Uh, but then I got really lucky for a while, right? Like this kept going up. So every time I'm going up, that means I'm finding fives. Each time I'm coming down, it means I'm not finding fives. Um, and so what we notice is like, for example, normally we should expect one sixth to happen. So one sixth of the time we should get a five. So let's see if this happens in our graph. Um, so let me draw a line at 1, 6, which is about 16.6%. So it should be around here. Ooh, this line is disgusting. How about we don't do that line? I thought I added a thin line. Oh, there we go. Black. Uh, so 16.6, .6, we'll do it here. Nope, I am removing this again. We're going to make this thinner. This should just be one point. Uh... Nope. Can I not lower it? Oh, there we go. Done. One point. Uh, and then 1.6. There. And we'll make it as horizontal as I humanly can. There. So this is 16.6. So what, what do we kind of notice here? What we kind of notice is um, that our trend here is, well, we got really lucky for a while. And this luck kind of stayed. So in this case, you're going to kind of see that even though we're trending down, right? So like here, this is each time we're going a little lower than before, right? So this one, if I go over, is a little above. So we're kind of keeping going down. Um, and that's because we're trending towards coming towards this line. And I might not have drawn this line perfectly, but each time we're kind of coming closer and closer to this line. So if we were to do this trial more times, this should eventually come down to the line. Um, and so that's like one of the things we'll see. Like, so a lot of times when we're looking at relative frequency, we get close to where we should be, but not exactly. But it gives us a good idea of whether we're in the right spot or not. Um, so yeah, so we will be using relative frequency a lot in the future. Uh, we're gonna end today 
or this video by quickly talking about subjective interpretations as well. Uh, so subjective interpretations are uh, basically they're the opposite of frequency interpretations. They're when we look at calculating chance, when using uh, opinions, opinions, or non-hard evidence. Uh, so basically, these are things like um, who's going to win the election, right? Yeah, we have polls, but they're not they're not hard evidence, right? We don't have full information. Um, we're, we didn't actually do the election. Um, or like, what's the chance of a team winning? Like, we know their previous chances, so we can estimate kind of how well they're going to be doing, but it's very dependent on how much, how much is they ate, how well they're feeling, um, what the vibe is. Like, there's so many things that get, get calculated that it's impossible to actually measure. So we just use opinions. And so this type of interpretation is normally called subjective. When we look at probability in this way, uh, it's normally called Bayesian probability. Uh, now, the textbook calls this subjective probability, which I personally prefer that terminology, but most probabilistic people will now call it Bayesian probability. So just note that a lot of times you're going to see this term when we're looking at subjective probabilities. Um, so yeah, so we're going to end this um, here for today. Uh, this has been sufficiently long. It's a little over 10 minutes. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, so next video, we will talk about distributions. Uh, so I will see you then.